So lately we've gotten used to the fact that Apple rarely changes the design of its devices. Recycled MacBook design, recycled iPhone design, iPhone 10, 11, 12, 13 are almost identical devices with mainly one difference, the camera unit a and colors, of course. And the 13 inch M2 Pro, identical design, touch bar, and I'm sure the upcoming 14 and 16 inch MacBooks won't get any distinctive features. So according to this Apple strategy, there is a possibility that the iPhone 14 will be the last iPhone to be noticeably upgraded. And it's quite possible that very soon we'll see Apple shift its focus and unveil some new devices that will make Samsung, Elon Musk, and even Xiaomi really stressed out. And I'm really excited about this. Hope you're excited too, and let's get into it. We already told you about the upcoming M2 Pro and M2 Max, and it's likely that the new processors will be produced using a three nanometer technology. In this case, this development will be the first in the world, and that's very cool. But given the unclear situation around Taiwan, and in case you didn't know, that's where the TSMC factory is located, which produces almost all the processors we know, unfortunately, there is a possibility that after three nanometers, Apple may have some difficulties with creating new processors, two nanometers specifically. Not to mention the fact that Apple seems to be in no hurry to surprise us. Personally, I still don't see much difference between the M1 and M2. The 18% increase is barely felt in real life. And I'm by no means saying that these are bad computers. I love Apple tech, I use it all the time myself. But the reality is that we're probably gonna see a slowdown in Mac's development. Well, at least the MacBook Air has been redesigned, but what about iPhone? IPhones. Many words have been said about Apple's new iPhone 14, a lot of leaks and insider info surfaced on the web lately, and all the media have been screaming that iPhone 14 will not get much change. They will most likely remove the mini and replace it with the iPhone 14 Plus, which will be the same as the iPhone 14, but bigger. The iPhone 14, on the other hand, will be an updated copy of the iPhone 13 with only software differences. Of course, the 14 Pro and the Pro Max will get a few upgrades, but in in general, we'll see just a few changes to the iPhone lineup again. To summarize, I, like many, am waiting for a new smartphone from Apple, but rather just something new from Apple. So we have reasons to believe that Apple is going to unveil some bold, completely new devices. Do the words Apple Car mean anything to you? It may not be as interesting to talk about as the new Macs, but it will definitely affect the whole company. Since 2014, eight years ago, rumors and speculations started coming in about a possible Apple Car. Someone from the car companies went to work for Apple, then strange Apple equipment was seen on the roads. And in all these eight years, Apple only announces an updated CarPlay at WWDC this year. Not a word about the actual car. But we wouldn't have released this video if we hadn't learned some interesting facts. Okay. Apple Car. First, according to several sources, late 2021 reports show that Apple could officially announce the car project in 2022 and launch it by 2025. One German report indicated that Apple has a secret lab in Berlin with 15 to 20 of the best people in the German auto industry working on such things as Apple Car concept. A possible manufacturer is the Austrian division of Magnus Ter. There is also an opinion that Apple will likely be among the first to integrate AR technology for displays right on the glass, for example. Among other things, there have been rumors that this car will not require a real person to drive it, hence the full autopilot mode. And that sounds exciting, but unfortunately, this probably will not happen, at least in the foreseeable future. By the way, Meng Chi Kuo said back in August 2018 that Apple would create a product as part of Project Titan by 2023. But we already know what happened. COVID-19. And then the analyst also stated that we won't see an Apple car until 2025 or even 2027. And there is a huge emphasis on autopilot. Right now, cars with equipment to learn how to autopilot are being driven on public roads in the US. And given that Apple wants to create a car based entirely on autopilot, this system must be trained to perfection. You don't want an Apple car to drive you off into a tree because it remembers your jokes about Siri from 
2014, do you? And US laws for a long time prohibited the use of cars with autopilot. The driver had to be behind the wheel. The law also required that a car with autopilot could be switched to manual mode at any time. Therefore, Apple's idea to create such a concept for a long time could not be implemented. And just this year, legislation allowed the use of autopilot cars on the roads. Consequently, we can assume that Apple's goals may soon be achieved. And of course, you shouldn't expect a budget car from Apple. They release smartphones every year for all comers for some 1000 bucks plus. Hence, Apple Car will be no exception. And that's not all. There is a good chance that Apple will soon be competing with Samsung in yet another segment, foldable smartphones or devices in general. Meng Chi Kuo says that the first foldable iPhone will have a bigger display and the Z Fold 3 has a 7.6 inch display unfolded. Accordingly, it could be something similar to the iPad mini. Based on John Prosser's statements, Apple is testing two completely different types of iPhone flip, a fold-out hybrid tablet similar to the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold lineup and a clamshell flip phone design akin to the Galaxy Z Flip range. To be honest, I'm not a fan of foldable smartphones at all and Samsung's experience has shown that foldable devices have a place in our world but it still looks like some kind of concept. You know, don't get me wrong, and I don't think Apple is in a position to take huge risks. It's possible that we'll definitely see it sooner or later, but it's more likely to happen when Apple is 1000% sure that this foldable smartphone will be the best on the market. But the foldable iPhone flip is not the last device on our list. There's also Apple glasses. After all, Apple probably wants to take over the wearable device category and already had a great experience when they introduced the Apple Watch and won the nomination for the best selling smartwatch right away. But it's not that simple with glasses. First of all, I'm sure they remember Google's experience. And as we can see, there are no people walking down the streets of New York wearing glasses with built-in displays and cameras and so on. Again, we have a huge number of concepts from Apple based on which we can try to predict what it will be. Rumors say that we should not expect glasses from Apple in the near future, simply because the first thing expected is an AR VR headset, which is expected to be revealed in late 2022 or early 2023. And after that, glasses. Early reports from Bloomberg and the information said the device could come out in 2023. Meanwhile, analyst Jeff Fu says Apple glasses could launch in late 2024, along with a second generation version of Apple's VR AR headset. And as you may notice, too often the AR VR headset is mentioned along with Apple glasses. According to people who have seen prototypes, the Apple VR and mixed reality headset reportedly feature ultra high resolution screens and a cinematic speaker system which should provide a realistic visual experience. These sources also said the headset looks like a slimmer Oculus Quest, but the design is not definitive as the company continues testing to determine the ideal fit for most head shapes. But enough VR, let's get back to the glasses. The glasses are expected to sync with the user's iPhone to display things like text, emails, maps, and games. And Apple, of course, plans to use third-party apps and is considering a special app store similar to the Apple TV and Apple Watch. In addition, we have some rumors based on a pattern that Apple glasses wouldn't need prescription lenses since the smart glasses would be automatically corrected for people with low vision using an optical assembly. And it's quite possible that this patent could be used in VR as well. And there is also another pattern that suggests that Apple will point the image directly in into users' eyes, and that sounds a little scary. Another Apple pattern describes that you will be able to change the background instantly. It describes how the headset can use a chroma key which replaces a solid color background with something else. Another Apple pattern suggests that Apple Glass can help you see better in the dark with depth sensors that provide a wider view of the world around you. And there are many more patterns, but it's the design that worries me the most. Because not every style of glasses fits every person. I spent a week looking for a perfect style. <laughs> some people like round glasses, some people like more rectangular glasses. And the biggest challenge for Apple at the moment is to create something universal, a gadget everyone will like, and then to create all these magical features which are in the patents. And what devices would you like to see from Apple? Let us know down below. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, then also go ahead and click on this video and this one, and see you in the next one.